For those of you who watched my video on how to build a TNC-based thermal imaging camera, you might recall it's an 8x8 sensor, and while the results are decent, it's only an 8x8 sensor. I thought my interpolation routines did a pretty good job, but still, at the end of the day, you're not going to get much out of an 8x8 sensor. When I heard about the Molexus 32x24 pixel sensor, I just had to have one. It promises up to 32 hertz frame rate, can be powered by 3.3 volts, which is great for my TNC, and has an easy to connect to I2C bus. To get my camera up and running, I needed a library. Fortunately, SparkFun already had one written. Their library is on GitHub, so just go to that address and download it. Even though the title says Arduino example, forget using an Arduino or a Nano. They even claim on the website that it's not even possible. Stick to a TNC 3.1 or above. My personal recommendation is a TNC 4.0. Blazingly fast and can handle this job well. The electrical connections are fairly straightforward. The device itself is an I2C, so you'll be using your SCL and SDA lines. And knowing me, I've got to put a display on everything and have touch and have SD support. So I use my favorite 2.8 inch 320 by 240 ILL, ILI 9341 display. There are a few things that you'll have to do. You'll have to remove resistors R1, R2, R3, and just put a glob of solder there to make it zero ohm. Solder closed J1 and only use displays with the black pin headers. I have yet to find any display that is tri-state, meaning you can use the display and the touch and the SD. You can only get one, maybe two out of the three. Typical SPI dis uh, display. All the SPI pins for the uh, SD card connect with the SPI pins on the display, which the library that I'm using has an SPI, so you connect everything together. Of course, you're going to give uh, chip selects and any interrupt request their own special pins. And of course, DC and uh, CS. Note I'm actually connecting my reset line to a digital pin. That way, I don't get those infamous white screens on startup. If you are hurting for pins and you need to uh, omit your reset, no problem. You can jump your reset right to 3.3 volts, but if you get the white screen, you'll probably want to put a resistor capacitor in line with the reset to slow the charge to the reset. You just need to power the reset slightly after the device gets powered up, and then hook everything up to your TNC 4.0. I haven't tried this on a TNC 3.2. I'm sure it will work, but just not as fast, but forget an Arduino. It won't have the memory, and it certainly will not have the horsepower to do all the calculations that we're about to do. I've got my entire device all wired up on my solderless breadboard. does look like a rat's nest, but it does get the job done. One thing I did find that when I put the, um, the sensor with some jumper wires to the SCL lines and SDA lines on the uh, Teensy, I got some real bad interference. I thought the device was defective. The camera was um, actually fine. You just have to make a very, very close connection between it and your, uh, your MCU. Let's take a look at the code. This source code came right out of the, the example, includes the header files like you would expect, and to my surprise, the address that the author gave with the, uh, the device 0 hex 33 was the same as mine, so my unit fired right up. I didn't spend a whole lot of time looking through the code and seeing how it worked. Right after the author makes a call to get all the sensor arrays, I put a simple little loop to dump all those to a serial monitor to see exactly what they were. And on fire up, initial fire up, everything worked just fine. All 768 points, read a temperature, and output to the serial monitor. I did make some changes to the uh, to the code here. I changed the name of the arrays to sensor temp and a few other things just because I'm that kind of a guy. Now the question is, is how do you convert the temp to a color and display it on a unit? If you watch my video on how to interpolate using the 8x8 sensor, the process is exactly the same. I went to the web, found some RGB values and a temperature, and plotted them out on a graph. And you get this very interesting graph where cold, as you would expect, is all blue. Then as the temperature ramps up to somewhere in the middle, you get mostly green. Then when you, the temperature ramps up even higher, you get mostly red until the very end, you get magenta color with a little bit of added blue. Now it's just a matter of developing an equation or a set of equations that you input a temperature. The equations will give you the RGB value back. Let's take a look at what that looks like. In my humble opinion, this is the heart of the program right here is converting that temperature. 
Uh, line 451, there's red, and I do some uh, calculations. This is just simply y equals mx plus p, basically. I do have some constants in there to control the slope of the uh, how fast things turn uh, red or blue or green or whatnot, and that's what the a, b, c uh, constants are for. But as you look through the code, you can see that this is really nothing more than y equals mx plus b. Then I'm making a call to the display's color 565 routine, passing in the red, green, and blue, and getting back the two byte value. Then that two byte value can be dumped right out on the screen. A very quick run through of the code here. Include the libraries as you would expect. I have some cute fonts. I'm using the ILI 9341T3 uh, driver, which is a very, very fast display driver for the teensies. I'm using the EEPROM library because I like to save settings with the actual unit itself. Touch screen support and if you want to print screen, I've got a routine that will do that for you. Bunch of constants for dumping things out on the screen, row locations, column locations, some button lo um, values. If you ever want to dump an icon to your screen, here's how you do it. Uh, there's a nice little program here or an online converter that you upload an icon, uh, a bitmap or a JPEG or whatever, and it will give you the um, hex values back. Then lower in my code, there's a routine that will print that cute little icon to your screen. Some constants for some display data, file name for my print screen routine, and just a bunch of other values. I won't spend a whole lot of time going into this. Also, I forgot to tell you that I also have a ILI9341 controls library with things like sliders and buttons and uh, checkboxes. Object initialization, fire up the display, fire up my sliders, fire up an option box and a checkbox, create some buttons, create your sensor, create the touch screen and a touch screen point. Then inside of setup, your typical code, turn the display on, turn your touch on, my personal function to get parameters so I can save things like refresh rates and a few other things in the EEPROM and recall them upon startup. Get the temperature range, this is where we get the max, min, and compute the ABC, and just a bunch of typical inits for buttons and sliders and a few other things. Then a bunch of code here to show a cute little splash screen, show what the sensor readings were uh, stored in the EEPROM, and a few other things. Nothing real fancy here. You can comment most of this code out if you're not into uh, neat displays and whatnot. Then loop, uh, I check if anybody touched anything. If so, go do something, either show a menu or save an image to your SD card. I'm also doing some magic here to build a histogram uh, later on that you'll see in the actual working code. Then first interpolation routine. We're actually going to uh, interpolate every point from zero to 310, 24 times. We start with each of the 310 column values, then we interpolate each of the row values. Get a high, get a low, get a delta, get a temp, compute the red, the green, the blue, and so on and so forth. Then dump everything to the screen with this very last call right here. Check the menu options. Either it's a blank, has a gradient legend, or a histogram legend. I have a secondary way that you can display the data if you don't want to pay the price of the interpolation routines, but show as quick as you possibly can. We're going through our 32 by 24 pixel arrays, getting the color temperature for each of them, and just dumping out a 10 by 10 box. I do have a manifest constant for the box size of being 10. That way, if you just want to see what it looks like without the interpolation, you can get that very quickly. A few other things on how to draw a bitmap. You pass in the location, the bitmap itself, and the size of that bitmap, and it will put that on your screen at the location specified. All the rest of this code in here is how I process my buttons, how I process uh, the touch, and a few other types of housekeeping issues for handling touch. Let's see the code in action. First example here was what it looks like right out of the box, not scaled up, not interpolated. I know you can barely see it, but that is 32 by 24 pixels. And you can see that, yeah, that kind of looks like my hand moving around, but you really can't see what's going on here. First thing I did, let's scale this thing up to a 10 by 10 box for each pixel. Fills up the entire screen, but yeah, it looks pixelated. Um, a lot better than the 8x8, tons better than the 8x8, but still, I think we can do a lot better. And you can see me waving my hand, counting, and a few other things, just to show the, the performance of the, uh, of the device here. 
I believe I have this on about um, four or eight second uh, refresh rate here. You can't go too high, even though I have my I2C bus cranked up to one megahertz. Um, you just can't get a lot of performance out of this thing because of the display. Let's change an option here to turn smoothing on, which is basically running the code through my interpolate routine. And you get much, much better results here. Uh, the fingers look pretty good. Uh, you can see me counting. You can see me waving. I'll even give you a thumbs up here in a little bit. And uh, I'll even stand up and wave my hands around so you can see the, uh, the resolution here. I know my iPhone is not doing a very good job capturing the video here. So what I did do is use my print screen utility and get several images and stack them up right in my video editing software. This is really what the display looks like. One thing to note that if you're holding your hand real close to the sensor, you get a really, really nice refined image. But if you move your hand back or stand up or do something more than about four feet away, yeah, you get kind of just, you get what you get. Not real fancy here, but I don't expect a lot out of a 32 by 24 sensor array. Tons, tons better than the 8x8, eight eight, but still, um, it does a pretty good job when you're at close range. Quick rundown of the UI here. I have nice slider controls that allow you to adjust the uh, the, the, the temperature, the uh, plus or minus to give you a range on where the color gradient will be drawn to and from. You have an option to hide the legend, show a gradient, or show a histogram. I didn't think the histogram would be very useful until I started using the thermal cam and find out that's actually my personal favorite. And of course, a checkbox to enable or disable whether you want smoothing, which is basically the interpolation. I've even added print screen capability so you can take a snapshot of your image. Just press anywhere on the screen and an image will be generated. It will be displayed for a quick verification. Press anywhere to continue. Be aware the display that I list is the only display that I have found that works with SD card and pixel reading. Well that's it. How to use your MLX 906402 by 24 IR array. Thanks for watching.